A Conventional View of Addiction Chapter 1 An Addiction Guide Basic Info on Addictions The most common addictions are Alcohol Candy, Sugar, Carbohydrates, Fat Coffee, Tea, Colas, Caffeine Prescription Drugs Recreational Substances Sex, Love Shopping Acquiring material goods. Smoking, nicotine. Treatments from the conventional medical field are often used in conjunction with one another, usually several at a time, whatever works. The most common therapies are counseling, exercise, holistic methods, journaling, meditation, mental health drugs, nutrition, positive thinking. Prayer Support Groups Vitamin Therapy Books about addictions in general are at number 616.8526-86 or RC 552 to RC 564 at the library. The Conventional View of Addictions 1 All addictions are a craving for love. For the addict, the drug of choice is more. A definition of addiction is continued use despite negative consequences. Addiction is a powerful and compulsive need for substance or an activity like shopping or stealing. People with addictions will do almost anything to get their next fix even steal, neglect their responsibilities, trash their families, etc. It's a crisis around the world, a burden on healthcare, crime, lost productivity, property destruction and necessary treatment slash education services. There is no universal explanation as to why people become addicts although I think it's a person is not centered and inspired enough within themselves so they seek out something to take away the feeling of emptiness and loneliness within. It's tied in with the following factors. Genetic predisposition. Observing addicted parents as a child. Low self-esteem. Escape from a mundane or otherwise troubled life. For pleasure. To fit in. Rebellion. Peer pressure. Addiction and recovery are big business. Many people out there don't seem to be able to control their lives, hence, a huge movement slash industry in this direction. Despite all the many so-called therapies and treatments created over the years, it all comes down to one basic thing and that is that the addict has to admit to him or herself that he's got to stop to save his own life and to stop hurting the people that love him and the people around him are there for support to help him through. Health insurance is starting to cover a lot of addiction problems. Many professional and trade organizations have programs and support groups for people in their industries. The licensing boards and state professional associations of many occupations offer confidential programs where you can work on your addiction without jeopardizing your license. The conventional view of addictions too. Anyone who's addicted to anything is missing out on some part of life, either control or love and they're either trying to find comfort through their addiction or they're beating themselves up, punishing themselves for something. You can break out of it by realizing the reasons behind it then simply willing it away. Don't buy into the crap about it being a disease. That's something created by therapists to lure more people into counseling so they can make more money particularly if addictions are classified as diseases which means that they're covered by medical insurance. It's all a cop out. You got into it, you can get out of it with just the power of your mind, body and soul. Addiction Transfer Info Addiction transfer is a relatively obscure concept relegated to women who have lost weight and are now substituting alcohol for their former food addiction. You get rid of one addiction but start getting addicted to something else. It's common in people who have gastric bypass surgery, lose a bunch of weight but still haven't confronted the psychological underpinnings of their addictive behavior. These people become alcoholics, hooked on pills, sex addicts, etc. Workaholic slash workaholism. My work is my worth. Workaholism is positive for some people because you perceive yourself as an artist of work. You love it so much that there's nothing else you'd rather do with your life but the picture is not so clear and rosy. They say workaholism often hides other problems like wanting to escape home life, alcoholism, if you're single, you don't want to go home and be lonely, a distraction to cover up some problem you have, etc. Personally, 
I'm a workaholic for what I love to do because it keeps me inspired about my life. Day by day, my life is about releasing a certain amount of my natural energy to meet my own personal standard in life. This is generally a monumental amount of work only to me it's not work. It's kinda like my fountain of youth. It keeps me young. There's almost nothing else I'd rather do. I don't wanna go to Disneyland, I think most TV and movies suck, frivolous pursuits like golf and video games bore me. I love what I do and I intuitively know it keeps me young so I only think it's workaholism if it stresses you out and there are plenty of counseling services opening up to treat workplace stress. Some workaholics burn out physically via heart attacks, brain hemorrhages, ulcers, etc. Other burn out mentally via depression, stress, and suicide. You need balance in your life. Remember the old cliché about not wishing you had spent more time at the office on your deathbed. Free time to do what you really want to do is the goal of life. Find something you really love to do that can earn you your cash. Lower your standard of living if it means more free time. You don't need much to live a great life. Workaholic websites. Allaboutlifechallenges.org slash workaholic.htm en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash workaholic managementhelp.org slash prsn underscore wll slash workholic.htm r-a.org, recoveries anonymous selfhelpmagazine.com slash articles slash wf slash work.html soulwork.net slash sw underscore articles underscore eng slash addictions.htm workaholic.org WORKAHOLICS4HIRE.COM Workaholics Anonymous 510-273-9253 WORKAHOLICS-ANONYMOUS.ORG